Welcome to style class, and um, I'm Amy. I'm Katora. This is Katora. <laughs> and uh, it's been a hot minute since we've been here. It's been two weeks because we just finished the Spring 24 runway show, mm -hmm. which was great. But now we are back to fall because uh, life goes on and it's starting to get cold out, which I am super happy about. Um, but today's discussion is going to be highly focused on the closet. And this is something we talk about ad nauseum. Yep. Um, and this whole idea of like really long range planning for the closet came up when we were merchandising our collection because it's how I think about when we're designing, right? Like I don't think just about this season. I think about what we've done in the past, what we're going to do in the future. Mm -hmm. And I know when I have all of those dots in place that that is what helps calm me down so I can make sure that I'm not designing into too many t-shirts or denim right. or whatever. Things may, people may have a lot of already. We're looking for newness. Exactly. So what we thought about is how can we really help you all get to that point where, I mean, not to be like, I don't want to be all zenny, but it, maybe I'll be a little Rick Rubin-ish and that when you get to that point where you feel very calm and at ease, it really helps you think Clearer and it helps you think more creatively and both of those are really good things so that's what we're hoping to get you guys to so uh, if you've done your homework and if you haven't you can post homework this and fake it right now yep. the homework is on the good ick and it's at Tibby and it is critical planning for the closet strategic plan I don't remember anyways it's all critical and it's planning and it's strategic <laughs> it's easy for you to say yeah so I'm sorry, this is like It's been a long time. It's been a while. Been doing a lot of things. The yeah. main part of thinking strategically in the closet is understanding that it's very much about thinking in a mindset and not an age set. And I will tell you, I am so personally offended by the <laughs> bullshit recommendations of what you're supposed to wear at any age. I'm offended at 55. Nina is calling big time bullshit on that at 59, our new stylist in the uh, headquarters store. Um, so this is all about mindset. Mindset of chill, modern, and classic. And so if you approach your closet with the idea of mindset first, and this is the overarching line here, then it starts to, what really starts to like break down what should be in your closet is really against what your personal style is, what your lifestyle is, and you guys can, I did this backwards so that you guys can really read it. You, huh? What really am I quick. doing wrong? Yeah. No, you're doing nothing wrong. Technical pause. Yes. For a sound. Oh, okay. I'm gonna, sound check. I'm gonna swipe up, and if it goes dark, we're gonna go live immediately again. Go for it. Okay, so we're gonna go to our microphone and turn the gain way up. And that should be. What is this card? Better. Functionality. Oh, oh lasting. It should be lasting. Okay. okay. We're okay? We're, We're still live. Good. Can you hear okay. me? It's up. Can you guys hear me? Yep. That sounds Okay. All right. So if you guys can't hear me, I know you'll scream out. Yeah, you'll chime in. Okay. So your mindset, chill, modern, and classic. And then when you're thinking about what belongs into that closet, it really then comes down to what is your lifestyle? What is the functionality that you need from your clothing? Uh, you know that you need that clothing to last and you want to apply your personal style to it. And all those four factors, what they do is they serve as like the checkpoint for every single thing that should go into your closet. And then on the output side here, this is where you are then able to come up with your outfits for packing, for experimenting, etc. 
Okay, so what we're gonna talk about today are three key uh, lifestyle segments and what we would wear within those segments. And so in the good ick, the first segment is for the executive. And I describe this person as someone who needs to be buttoned up, needs to feel very confident and strong, but also needs to be creative. If you guys um, don't know this, I know LinkedIn did a big study and creativity was the number one asset that companies are looking for in their leaders. That is because any computer can read a report, an Excel spreadsheet can be done in one second now, but the person who can creatively interpret that Excel spreadsheet is the winner take all at the end of the day. So you really want to project yourself as a person who can think outside the box. And so all of those attributes, I would say that we have so many C-suite women who buy from us and that uh, would fit their description, but it also fits like a really up and coming 26 year old that I'm in the dressing room with and she's gotten her first job and she's being assumptive that She's going to be this one day, and this is the vibe that she wants to create for herself. Look the part, get the part. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, we have a few pieces here to show you. And so, what am I wearing? You. What am I wearing? Are wearing the wrap skirt. The wrap skirt. We're wearing a Charlie. So, this is um, one of our new shirts in the cotton poplin and it's got this interesting detail. We had a fun thing in the runway show. We had strung our uh, buckle uh, brightling watches through it, so you can be very creative with these shirts. This is a really good example of a shirt that really reeks of creativity, but when you walk into the room, there's not, like Bureau Price Waterhouse Cooper, there's not a guy who's like, there's no way you're doing my taxes. Right. You're not overly creative, but you're still pragmatic. Yeah, you look like you um, have got interesting thoughts going on in your head, and interesting thoughts are really good. Um, I tend to lean on a lot of navy, um, but that's a color choice thing. Is that a season thing, or do you always lean on navy? Like, throughout the summer, fall, winter, oh, navy's your jam? Navy's my jam. Definitely. More than black? Well, I don't know. It goes in faces. Okay. I'm in navy face right now. All right. Um, and then this is another shirt that we love. And again, just giving like an interesting detail here that let's say right now, like if you're a Goldman Sachs woman, maybe you're going to wear a navy blue t-shirt up here and you're not going to do the slit. But if you're traveling, you're going to have this slit showing at night time, right? right? Yep. But the key is that, you know, an executive is really busy. They need a lot of functionality. So you want the top that you could just put on with shorts and wear with your friends. Mm -hmm. If you are the young exec, you want the one that like, you could wear with like some nerdy high-waisted jeans and or weird denim Bermuda shorts and stilettos at night and not have your friends be like, why are you wearing your work clothes? You just came from the office. Yeah, like, stop it. Bleh. So um, yeah, so it's all, all about that. And then having a skirt that is creative here. Um, I'm sure right now I've got like our customer, Liz, uh, who runs Ogilvy Advertising. This would be like right up her zone here, just putting the kind of weird sock on with the pump. But again, if I'm at Goldman Sachs, I'm probably going with like a navy blue tight here yep. and a pump. What I like is that Brittany actually wore this to the show mm -hmm. and she left this little skin out so you can still tuck it yeah. and have coverage there and see the belt which is kind of askew yeah. or get a little skin if you want to on the weekends or with a crop. So when you're building out this closet, this is how you are thinking with a, a long range in mind because you know where all of these things fit into your lifestyle now, but they're so intrinsically you and they work for your needs that you know that they're going to last forever. This yeah. is not, you know, a Vogue page of trends that next week you're gonna feel like suckered for buying into. Um, and it is absolutely ageless, so we're, we're not talking age here at all, it's just rude. Before you go, I think it's important to note that this is like, it fits a little higher, right? It sits a it little does. higher on your waist, similar to most of the trouser skirts that we have. So if it fits higher on Amy, more than likely it's supposed to fit, it's intended to fit a little bit higher on you as well. I, um, I did see though Grace, and in, in Grace, our stylist in New York, mm -hmm. she actually a couple times has pulled this up 
and then she tightened the belt the and then just side. wore it like a little hiked up and then hid the but that gave a little interest too because it kind of spreads the pleats in a new way right yeah and i want to say like grace did that and grace is like in her early 30s and she did that so it's not about like all of a sudden you become 50 and you're modest all right. of a sudden like it really is about whatever is right for you in that moment um and then of course for me um and obviously the bank depends on where you are in your mm -hmm. executive life but if you're going to round this out this is where i would make a decision to add a jacket here because I want the full head to toe vibe, and then we know I'm wearing this a million ways. Yeah, and I love that you can break it up and wear it a million different ways on your own. So as an exec, you're still managing your money really smart and well. Yeah, the other, um, I just want to show one more thing here. Is, well, she, uh, while she walks over there, I'm just gonna talk about times that I was interviewing for jobs, the way that I wanted to show up. I always wanted to give off the appearance of someone that, um, knew what they were doing, right? That first time you walk into an office, hey, come here for a sec. That's Sarah Brody. We have a theme, clearly. No pressure, Christian. Christian's our single audience <laughs> But when you go for an interview and you want to feel like, okay, I'm showing up, this is how you showed up. I mean, I pretty much wore an iteration of this outfit for my interview at TV. Okay. I, I would did, never and that's how I was hired. I wore all navy. And you well, wore those earrings. And I wore but she I just literally said, wore it with what I am currently wearing, just a silk pant. Well, I like think it's smart, right? It's a creative, uh, it's creative, but still like really clean, mm -hmm. forward, modern. Is it chill modern and classic? Oh, sure. It's chill modern classic. Oh, shit. <laughs> I took my sweat off because I think I'm traveling. Clearly, we're not on network TV. No, we're on Tibby Network. No bleeps. But I would wear the cardigan if I were coming down on the train. I'd take mm -hmm. it off when I got there. These would be my commuter shoes, which are the Rudy's, and then I would switch to the Victor or the Bronson, which I can do now. And then I think, too, just throwing in, like, the gray sweater here. I think mm -hmm. for all three of us, like, we would just pass the sweater oh, around. Sure. And what's interesting, too, is this has a detachable collar that you can button in, but I think that... The thing is, is that the three of us would wear this all very differently. Mm -hmm. And and I hear that a lot. A lot of people are concerned, like, well, I look like everyone else in my friend group. And first of all, if that's true, I want to know this friend group because I want to hang out with them. They're going to look good. But regardless, you're not going to all look alike. You're not because you know that you are going to apply those little tweaks that you do, these things that make something quintessentially you, yeah. even down... Don't forget, like, it's things like your little bracelet that you're wearing. You oh, know? yeah, like, this is my butt. Well, th I mean, this belt is designed to be in the back. I kind of pulled it forward, but I could easily take it off and feel like I'm just wearing it this way. I can tie it around my neck. I mean, there's so many ways that I would wear this. So it's going to look different on everyone. I saw a woman in the store. She pulled it as snug as she could get it. It was really beautiful. And then she let it down for her evening on the town. <laughs> I mean, listen, it honestly offers a yeah. lot of versatility. Oh, let me show you guys. So um, this is the belt. You know, we show it online if you're curious, um, buttoned up from the back. Um, you could cinch it at the waist, like a I just mentioned. But, but look at how many wear it. buttonholes that is, right? Three. So you could do a million different things. And then we still have the same shape that we know and love from the Gabe at back, the little wedge, and Collar. I feel like I want to do other things with this. I'm curious now. I'm curious. It's a scar. No, I'm saying I feel like it's when you get your stuff, you should kind of like play around because what if I wanted to? Will this do that? I need something like a different interest. You know, I think like you're intrigued. Lines. I think you are looking at the jet suiting blazer that Amy was just wearing. I am. And you're trying to mimic that. I am trying to. Which like you're not mad at. No, no, no. Let's see where we go. Okay. All right. So. Oh. Because I have pinstripes here and I want to get a little. I am. I'm jet shooting. Jet shooting, baby. You are. Okay. I'm going to change my shoes. Just okay. So see. That's cool. I mean, Talk. I can talk about. What size are you wearing? Tell me what you're wearing. Um, I am wearing the wool flannel bay trouser in a size double zero. This is a high waisted trouser with a full bottom. Um, so it is sitting high on my waist. 
Um, the shirt I'm wearing is the navy wool flannel and the amazing thing about this shirt in particular um, is that it is designed with multiple ways to button the sleeve and I know you're thinking like yes obviously there are multiple That's ways to button plackets, the sleeves. Right? Two plackets. Yep. Placket is the there's one longer here. placket and then there's one shorter kind of the regular classic button right. placket. So the longer one unbuttons like this and just kind of acts as a cape. So for those of you who run hot or cold. <laughs> and if you want it, you could just like Do button it. that back up too and leave it. Can you show them the buttons on that guy? Sure. Like how many? There's like four or five buttons there. So you, you could do it. a million All right. Buttons. One, two, three. There's four buttons here. Um, so again, I've just unbuttoned one here. So I just wanted a little cuff so I could roll it up or down. Um, I've just buttoned it once at the collar to kind of act as a shirt jacket. You know what that combo word is, I'm not gonna say it. Um, but I'm just wearing my Fundamentals Giselle tank and an extra extra small underneath. I've had this tank top for two years and then my shoe is my namesake shoe. It's the bro. Oh, <laughs> humble <laughs> brag. <laughs> okay, you're all well. I Guys. bought for this shoe we put it down the runway. You all know you love it. it Amy is. did not love it, but she does now. Tracy Facts. and I. Facts. Tracy and I really fought for this shoe. I was on the fence, and it's. As did Alana. Wait, can I? Um, other than. I put my okay, like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm very off for talking no, 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 about no, no, my no. shoe. Well, bunny pissing contest aside. <laughs> <laughs> no, so taking this to another level. Go there. I think the point is that. It really does take time for your eye to adjust totally. because I did not like that shoe when it first came down. And when we put it with that dress and Amy Grab it looked so good and with the corset, she did. I was like, I don't believe it with that dress. And then it just took a hot minute. And then of course, like I was the first but one. But it was the friction. It was the good friction, but, but I will things say, take a minute. Totally. You know? and, and I think you can, it's really interesting because when we were styling for runway, this shoe, was the one that just really Did made sense with so many of the looks. And a year ago, it. it was definitely more of an internal oh, battle. Cool. <laughs> I want to go there because it I feel was like funny during the. Um, you're supposed to answer all the questions that I need to answer. I have okay. While we're here, I have changed my shoes, so I am. I, this is my commuter, not that I need one because it's highly pragmatic, so I don't need to change shoes, but if I'm someone that prefers a little, peace out, someone that prefers a little heel, I change from the Rudy to the Victor, which has a little heel. If it's fall, I'm going to do that with a sock, which I could also do without. I wanted to show you the option of what we were talking about with the Pedro. So I wear the Pedro a lot. I had it on this morning. The Croc just gives you a little bit more interest with the good texture, the good brown, we know the shoe and we love. Um, yeah, here we are. Hello. What's the song? Is it Taylor Dan? Wait, can I also, yeah. I just want to show one more thing. When you are talking about um, how to update your wardrobe and you want to be very realistic about how much can really be in the wardrobe, right? Like yeah. we're not gorging on clothing here. This is about the long haul. And so, like I said earlier, think about the different accessories that you have, um, because I'm going to show like these are the cowboy boots that we did with this amazing, Mexico. yeah, with Car uh, well in Houston, mm. but Carlos, his family is from Mexico and um, a family-run business, and he did these cowboy boots for us. But like a lot of people have an old pair of cowboy boots in your closet. Maybe you had a pair from college. This dress with the pair of cowboy boots, like really it is about the vibe change. So when you think about the items in your closet that you have brought in for very specific reasons, then this is where the outfits become very natural because you are thinking in terms of different vibes that you're creating. Okay, now we have not seen this on before, so <laughs> let's see. Like, like, let's see. I just have never seen you like, Cowgirl. I have I have a few. Yes? Yeah, I do. I'm I'm not mad. I think the people are loving it. I'm not Yeah. Yeah, this is good. So the one thing Carlos told me when we did this is and I agree with him, he said he would have made the shaft a little longer. A little bit longer. You're like, like no sandwich, Carlos. Be there. 
Yeah. I'll take a little bologna sandwich. This is a little flat one. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not a full sandwich. No. For it's anyone, especially from Italy, if you're going to write to me, this is not, don't go there. It's, it's not the a tiniest slice of prosciutto. <laughs> yeah, a little slice. Yeah. Um, okay, right, cool. So that was sure. the executive conversation. And then I wanted to move this on to um, another uh, lifestyle segment that I profiled in the Good Ed. And this is someone who I think I called um, at home, but hardly, is that right? So, and what I mean by that is this is someone who does not work in an office environment, um, but stay at home mom, stay at home woman seems hardly an appropriate way to describe someone who has an incredibly robust and active lifestyle. So it's, it's really interesting. We were talking about all these different groups with the team of stylists. One of them said, well, are these socialites? And I was like, no, they're not socialites. Socialites, they don't, no, they're not socialites. They are not, uh, they're not heading from spa appointment to spa appointment. That is not what keeps them busy. So they've got real shit going on and they want to be put together. And so they, they live a lifestyle where a lot of times the friends that you were going to go show up with are going to be in leggings from their third spin class or, um, you know, they're, they're just going to be either very comfortable or they are going to look really like wound within an inch of their life. And so that's if you're on like any of the school circuit stuff. So your goal is that you really need to be in a place where you can move from activity to activity and feel like yourself and still be put together. So if I am running around doing stuff where I've got to be on my knees with the kids in the classroom doing something, which now that Charlie's 23 at Georgia, I think he would die if I crawled into his classroom. But, um, but you know, this, obviously is going to work. And there are little things, like if I was um, had something earlier in the day and I was gonna do something with my kids, maybe what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start out with this outfit and I'm gonna wear a pair of sneakers. Yeah? And what are those pieces that you're wearing? Oh, these pieces, sorry. Um, I am wearing the Sid Jean in the longer length in a size 27, which equates to a size four. Uh, my belly button is here, and the top of the jean is hitting about right at the belly button. Uh, my hips are a little fuller, so for someone who is a size 27 with a more narrow hip, you're going to slide down a little bit. But you can see when I'm wearing the regular length at just under 5'5", five five, you get this little bit of a collapse right here, and then the volume here from the side. And so then I'm wearing the poplin shirt here, and I apologize, I don't know the name, but like let's just call it the good navy shirt right now. It's eco poplin shirt with inseam. It's eco poplin shirt with inseam. Inseam, huh? Is it? No. Inseam. That's my inseam. Well, it's a. We'll come back. To I've it. never <laughs> thrown. Um, but anyway, so if I'm with the kids and I'm running around, I'm probably going to throw on this sneaker, but subtle thing, I'm gonna lose the belt. I'm gonna ditch the belt, the belt can stay in the car. And just the simple act of losing the belt and doing the sneaker and the jean gives it a very, very chill look. And then if I'm gonna go to some, um, some kind of important meeting and maybe I'm doing something great for Alzheimer's or something like that, um, then I'm gonna be a little more put together and I'm gonna slide on the belt and I'm going to keep on my heels, and then I'm going to throw on the jacket here. I got you the shirt. It is the Eco Poplin Sculpted Sleeve Top with cutout detail. So I'm wearing the Eco Poplin Sculpted Sleeve Top, top with cutout cut detail. I'm going to try and shorten these names one day. Um, and then I am wearing the uh, blazer. <laughs> um, that's the Hopper blazer? It is. That's Hopper. Are they not the same? I don't think so. I don't think that's Who me. Who does this? I don't know. I think it's me. Um, but anyways, it's a blazer that has enough detail in it to give it interest, um, but not so much that it looks like a crazy person showing up at this um, event where people are apt to look a little crazy in all of their pink worsted wool, whatever. 
um, it's a thing. Um, so just want to point something out though. When I was trying this on, I did, here, sorry. I started out with the hopper jacket and the brown. And so again, just subtle things that can kind of bother you and, and know that when they bother you, you play around with fixing it rather than um, throwing out the baby with the bath water. So for me, when I put this on, there was one element too busy. I think this being brown, this being plaid, it's got texture, the navy, the black, there was one element too much. And just simply taking off the belt, the belt that played a really important role when I was wearing all the dark, taking off the belt here when I'm wearing the brown, just calm down the whole outfit. So this is when we talk about the rule of three. Sometimes thinking about the rule of three, very, um, if you're trying to approach it very analytically to start out with, it's good sometimes to at least understand the premise of it and then just get to a place where when you start to feel something's off, that's how you kind of know when you've crossed it. If you're sitting there trying to look at yourself constantly and go one, two, three, you'll make yourself crazy. So here I was a little bothered. There was too much going on. I took it off. I know you guys are going to send me DMs about this, but. That's great. Yeah. I mean, I think so. All right. What are you wearing? Um, so this is a busy, but not busy. Mm -hmm. But so a lot of people, I feel like, are very curious about how to wear a Calder sweatpant outside of yes. the typical sweatpant wearing areas of your life. So at home, on the couch, on your friend's couches. Um, and for me, it's all about friction. So I'm wearing the gray Calder sweatpant. This is the long length, actually. Huh, okay. um, and, and, and how tall are you? I'm five, five feet. Two. Five, five two. two, wow. Okay. That's good. Right. Um, yeah. And I just like how they hit really like a little bit below my ankle actually. I'm yeah. wearing them with our new um, cashmere socks and just an old pair of Prada flats that have a little leopard detail that I thought were really interesting with the bank stripe shirt. Yeah, this is a whole, you know, this is in the book, this is hitting on antonyms, it's hitting on irony, and it's also the ton of one ton none. Like yeah. it really, it works from the pearl earrings, the, sh the striped shirt. Yeah, so the striped shirt, um, the sweatpants are and double extra small. The striped shirt is a extra is an extra small. And again, I really like how traditionally buttoned up and conservative and almost like workwear yeah. like this shirt is because it's um, the white contrasting collar. But then, so it really, I think, dials up the sweatpant. Um, yeah, so if it's you're really a valve for me, and I feel like that's what I really utilize it in my. That's how I really utilize it in my closet, especially um, over the summer. I've been wearing it a lot with like athletic shorts, yeah. um, just to really bring it together. Yeah, so if you fall into that lifestyle of really, really busy, you know, but you're at home, but hardly, you know that your over overarching goal when you go out is that you are looking to maintain your personal style and you do want to fit in. You don't totally. want to be the nut job showing up at the grocery store, but you also do want to stand out because who wants to look like everyone else? And I live in Greenwich, so that would be definitely a no. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you really want to find a way to stand out while fitting mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. And this absolutely does it because even as much of a standout as you are, you cannot pick up anything apart here and have an argument with it. It's totally. just good style. Totally, um, yeah. So. And I think a key for, I feel like, this person is um, layering and having the right pieces to layer because all of these pieces separately are really fundamental to my personal wardrobe and go back to really everything in the comments right behind us. Exactly. And what, what are you mouthing to me? Are you wanting the cardigan? Yes, okay. Come on in. Thank you. Um, I just want to show you one more thing for the, the busy at home uh, but hardly person is, again, having those little tricks in your closet 
that here, like if I'm wearing the Sid, the reason why the Sid doesn't just feel like any average jean is because it's not just any average jean. So I'm out running around and standing out whilst fitting in. Also knowing things like when you have a belt in your closet that is polished like this, this is when you can wear the big cardigan and the belt and you still feel put together. If I were to show up at my kid's hockey tournament, I don't look like I've lost my mind, you know? I just look like I happen to be like kind of fabulous. Um, or if I am having friends coming over for a meeting at home, I'm gonna just throw on like our gold slippers here. Yep. And then this is going to feel like a moment but I'm still gonna be completely in my zone. And I sure as shit am not worried about mixing the tones here. So don't, you guys don't write to me if that's okay, cause it is. Wait, these gold slippers. So these are, the runway had a different slipper. No, we had the gold in the runway. Yeah, we had the gold in the runway. We had the gold in the gotcha. runway and the silver in the runway. These are coming, um, I think in November, mm -hmm. in a crazy, amazing package. Um, so you'll see, they come out in November, but we, so they were perfect for the runway, so we wanted to add them in now. And you can see, like, they just give you that extra something, something without you having to build your whole wardrobe around Look at it. them. Yeah. They have, like, they're flexible, but they still have, like, a solid leather. I don't leather. think they're going to fit you. They're, like, a you 38. Sure? Yeah. Okay, let's try. Should I try? Go it? for it. Okay. I mean, if you want. All right. I should do they're it. They're not going to fit you. You sure? They're 40. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. I only did it because I knew the answer to that. And Amy would, I think we bet all the time, but it's not great to oh bet on IV Live. What? Oh, she's still in earshot. Shit. So if I'm going to be doing running around, and I know a lot of people that do this, guys. Thank you. So I would totally wear a blazer if I was going somewhere and I felt like I had to be pulled together, but I'm more of a cardigan girl on a day to day. Um, we met a lot of you in San Francisco that are working from home, so you're doing a lot of meetings, throwing stuff in the laundry, heading out to meet a friend, taking another meeting, and you're all around the mulberry bush. So this top is a great top for that. Um, I believe it to be like a valve top because it's an eco poplin, but it has interest. And I think if you've been building your wardrobe for quite some time, you have this version you have a button down that's slim you don't have a button down that has a cutout in the middle where you can do cool things and get a little bit of skin and still feel fairly um you know not moderate what would be the word what would be the word christian feel covered modest thank you christian <laughs> i like your excitement here so now i feel a little bit like myself i have a cutout i feel very modern i still feel chill i have on the plush jet joggers which we know is super comfortable. Um, and because it's so clean, I don't have a uh, cargo on my leg. I have pockets everywhere else. And then this little cut here, I feel, I feel aired out. So this is really great. Yeah. So another thing I wanted to talk about is in transition, I, a few of my clients are entertainment lawyers. One is, you know, traveling all over the place. So we talk about packing. In transition can mean anywhere from traveling from your home to abroad to an office, doing a lot of different things. Are this you all in works. Transition though? Is that where you are? Yeah, I think okay. I'm in transition. Well, I'm in transition because I went from being a, a mom. No, that's what you're talking about now. Well, I was yeah. leading into that, yeah. Go for it. A mom that's now back in the workplace, and so I need things that get me out of the house really fast. Yeah. Just like that skirt I had on this morning. I tell you, it's like a jogger, so that's an easy way for me to feel pulled together and have like a to declutter my decision making, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. And it, but here's another, and here's another spin on that because again, like I said, mine are 21 and 23 now. But I think that one of the things when I was trying to figure out who I was after giving birth, and I was out buying like Ibusu jeans, like I was going everywhere. I had on biker shorts last summer with the tank top. I was it, like. You, I have a like, body and it's mine and not the baby's. You're just like so desperate and searching. Yeah. And I remember um, just wishing that I had just known a little bit more about who I was. And so one of the things that you are searching for in that time are the pieces that serve a high functionality for that actual lifestyle. Mm -hmm. of like being on your knees a lot and running around. 
And then there are other things that you need for yourself that like you still go to events. You are still a human being that yeah. has a life that doesn't involve, you know, someone like sucking at you all the time. So, you know, <laughs> it's, it's true. <laughs> um, and so that's where like something like this dress to me, uh, Sherry McMullen wore it to I the show her. in the cream. And it's something that I feel so much like myself in it. It's got, you know, the zipper, it can go all the way up or it can go down. Well, backwards, um, right? Oh, the back one does too. And then the back one does yeah. as well. And, you know, for me, it becomes really important then that if I'm, can you sit me back mm -hmm. down a little bit? Is, you know, if I'm going to be buying something investment wise at that time, which that's where I made some really shitty, shitty, shitty decisions because it was literally like if you were shopping you know, just in someone else's head, you, you're so out of it. Yeah. And so finding things that like, if I am going to put it with like, um, the Croc Dean boot here, mm -hmm. if I'm gonna put it with the Croc Dean boot, it is going to feel just as good with the sandal. And I might even wear like those in silver if you were coming over to my house for dinner. Yeah. And um, so, you know, this, this feels really great with the boot as well. So one of the things that I pointed out in this section on the person who's going through the transition is where are you talking about it in terms of like being a new mom, right? And having something really dramatically happen different to your body. But I have been in a dressing room with a lot of women who are in their mid 70s and early 80s and they're going through a big time of transition. They are moving to a new place where you know they are going to be involved with a whole new set of friends and you would think that like you're showing up and you're 80 and that you're going to completely like know who you are and the thing is like these they do by and large but like no matter what I think it is just a real part of human nature to want to fit in and wonder what people are going to think about you and everything and so even with these women, I'm just telling them, okay, yes, you're in your 80s and you're gonna go there and you are sure as hell not dressing head to toe in Chico's. And you want to show up in a place with these people where they know who you are right away. Yeah. And, and so this is where the lifestyle, the way that we describe what you've gone through and, and what your concerns are are gonna sound exactly the same, only one of you could be 28 and the other one could be 78. So again, this is not about age, it is about where your mindset is and then how you really break that down into some very pragmatic steps so that you can tackle that closet. One of the things I brought up in the good ick is that it's very easy to feel like you have a massive problem like I don't know myself and I can't figure out my style. And, and if you think of the problem as just this one big blob, it becomes impossible to mm -hmm. tackle and you're not going to solve it by going on to Pinterest and typing in cool new mom outfits or whatever. So what you've got to do is really break down the problem into much smaller problems that you can tackle one by one. So if you look at the way that I've laid out the, you know, how to think about your closet strategically, I think you will find that it is going to be really logical for you and it's gonna help you think about it for the long term. And um, again, with the goal, show up, look like yourself, feel really good, buy what's right, because you're gonna get pissed if you buy the wrong things and you definitely do not want to buy too much. Um, sure. Sarah is wearing the shirt to mine. Did you have to your dress else the that you were gonna? Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, where are we now? I am. <laughs> I had just um, given birth, or I just moved to retirement. <laughs> to opposite ends. You know what? I commend yes. you. Yeah, and either uh, or. And I want to feel like myself, and I am going out and doing something, and I'm showing how this can be worn with, of course, just the most simplest heel or mm -hmm. cowboy boot, and I'm going to feel just like myself. And then you've got on the top version of this, I have on the I top love. version in cream. This is the Crepe Melee top. I love that there's a slight peplum, and I'm not normally a peplum gal. Um, pockets, obviously, because why 
don't want to carry a bag. Um, but also, you can put snacks in here, which I feel like Amy would do at any event. Um, and I'm wearing a size four, so this is the sample. So I would probably wear a double zero, which is my true size. The pants are the uh, Trichotine Rodney trousers, so this is more of the straight leg than the Simon version, which is kind of a little bit like a Winslow. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit higher than, um, this is higher than Estella. Mm -hmm. You were wearing, I've got pictures um, that I'll repost of yeah. Sarah backstage at the runway show. I wore wearing them at the, the runway show. Yeah, yeah. and then this, this is So this one. is the straight one. Um, they are a double zero and I just really like how they fall. I'm wearing them with the platform because they're a little bit too long on me and, but honestly I probably won't tailor them. We'll see, TBD. Um, and I'm, I don't know, I'm going wherever, everywhere. Revenge dates. Um, yes, wait. No. Oh, I was like, <laughs> yes, revenge dates. No revenge dates. Okay. Um, I don't know where I'm going. I'm certainly not going to the retirement account or just having given her. No, but, the, but this is, we were talking about people <laughs> who are having kind of lifestyle changes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think in this case, you know, I, I think another big lifestyle change that a lot of us have gone through is you're, you've, you've passed that mark out of your 20s and you're ready to just feel more grown up. You're ready to be taken totally. more seriously. Uh, you're ready for everyone to take you more seriously in your life. And I think this is like a perfect way to wow. think about that Thank as you. well. I, I agree with that. Moving from singlehood to like a relationship, like partnered with working sometimes can be something because... Yeah, I don't know. Um, someone was asking about sleeve coverage options, so I wanted to put on the um, this guy that we have here, and this I could put my head through the turtleneck completely, and then I'm just wearing it over. And do we know what this is? It's a torque. 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 T o r q u e. Um, there's multiple ways to wear it. You can also wear it on your head, which mm -hmm. which I'm not, which but not, um, I'm not. But I am wearing it as a turtleneck. I am also wearing it as a full scarf around me. For someone who commutes on a train a lot, this is like my kind of savior. Um, and then I'm going to put it on with the turtleneck, and I'll show you guys how that looks as well. And it has a nice slit in the back, so you can stick it here. It does. So I stuck my head through the slit. Right now. So it's big enough. It is now. I pushed hard. <laughs> okay. Choose the mother All right. Um, it's funny because, you know, someone posted today that she put on the red nylon skirt because she was feeling away. Yeah. And the color was helping to make her feel better. So I yes. feel like color does that for me. Sometimes I I go either way. I can go like black or I can go like deep, deep, deep to like ton in color yeah. and um, the wilts, we know that I love them. I think this is a very beautiful brown, mostly because of the sheen. It's not just your your average brown, but I could do a little brown comparison for you guys that are wondering if you could wear things together. I believe you can wear this, you should wear this together. It's shades of. This one's a little redder. Um, I'm not gonna do like a, I'd be a true sandwich. I wouldn't wear this with this, but I just wanna show you that if you did wear it with the wilts, this is the color that it would look like. Um, but yeah, you I like those sandwichy because of the yellow and the gold. We no, I, I someone no, is that no. <laughs> what kind of thank you. Like a sunflower. No, I thank you. Yeah. Like sandwiches are brown on the edges with like a little bit of like. I mean, this is like potato bread. No. I mean, if you're clearly like you guys don't eat enough bread because I know my bread and this is a Hawaiian bread. roll. <laughs> It is kind of my favorite. Thank you. And it's really yummy if you put that with like a little slider. All right, so back to it. Yeah. So, so this is the turtleneck. And this is not the turtleneck. Yeah. <laughs> this is the. So, um, yeah. So you can see it's. I love the turtleneck. And it's really great because if you are wearing like a tank top underneath, and then the little guy here, he slips up really nicely just even Ooh, under. That's cute. A jacket and then so when all of these I mean the the fact that like I put this on and it happens to go together I promise it's not a coincidence like literally when we're designing it's just constantly with past present and future 
in mind. And if you guys have seen the runway show uh, for spring, you'll see that everything here is going to layer up so nicely with spring, and not because it's uh, not because it's some crazy formula, but just because it makes sense. I actually wear all of our clothes a lot, and I want to be able to wear them a lot in the future. It seems like the front is longer than the back on purpose, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 And then in the back, too, if my hair was long enough, I could stick out my stick ponytail if I wanted. But it's not long enough, so. But you got that cool action going on. Yeah. All right. So, guys, please go read The Good Egg. Mindset, not age set. Anytime you um, see any of those articles about how you should dress at a certain age, don't get angry. Just feel sorry for whoever wrote it. Fabulous at every age. Yes. Um, and, um, and then just be cozy and warm. And, and anyways, read the good egg. What am I supposed to say? Oh, yes. If you check out Tibby today, we are going to have the soundtrack from the uh, runway show. Well, you know, it's on Spotify, but we will uh, give you all the deets on it. And it was an incredibly special, amazing soundtrack because the idea was a mixtape, things that we loved, and we didn't really overthink, does one make sense with the other? We just kind of went with what we love, which is what you should do with your closet as well. Well, actually, think about it more than that. That's how you get into trouble. Okay, all right, do your homework, read it, and then ask me questions about anything other than sandwiches. And potato bread. Okay. Nice. All right. All right. Okay. Good job, y'all.